Number 12, use solubility products and predict which of the following salts is the most soluble in terms of moles per liter in pure water. And then they give us these four uh, ionic compounds. So we're dealing with CAF2, HG2, Cl2, PBI2, and SNOH2. Okay, so we have to use the solubility products, which I pulled up for you guys. Solubility product, SP, solubility product, is just the KSP values. So I wrote down all the KSP values for the four individual ionic compounds. Now, we just have to figure out which one out of these four is the most soluble. And when they say most soluble, they're basically just saying which one out of these four dissociates into its ions the most, or basically will form the most, you know, the most ions in equilibrium. So it will dissociate or dissolve the most. Well, we have to first figure out whether we're dealing with an even playing field here. Fingers crossed, because then this, this, this uh, question gets a little bit cha more challenging. And I just noticed that this is HG2Cl2. There should be a 2 here. So I'm just going to add that. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so in order to do this, we first have to find out how many ions of each these compounds will break down into. So let's just start with CAF2, right? CAF2, the break, would be between the calcium and the fluorine, right? And this will break down into calcium and the fluorine, right? CA in group two, so that's a two plus. Fluorine is in the halogen group, that's always a negative one charge. You could also find these charges by, you know, doing the crisscross rule. One goes up to the fluorine, two goes up to the calcium. But now the most important part is just saying how many you have of each. Now here, I have two fluorines. So I know that I have to put a two in front of the F. There was only one calcium, so one calcium. So the total amount of ions is one of these and two of these. One plus two is a total of three ions. So we have to do the same thing for the other three of these. Now, HG2Cl2 is a tricky one because HG2 is its own polyatomic. So this two won't crisscross up to the, the chlorine. There was one HG2. So if I just say, okay, what's going to be the ions that this breaks up into? Well, we have the HG2. And it just started downpouring here. So sorry if you hear that in the background, but I, I actually like the sound of, you know, water on the, the windowsill. I like the sound of rain. Anyway, HG2, Cl, right? Cl is a minus one charge, and the two crisscrosses up, telling me that the HG was a plus two charge. We have to find out how many we have of each. There was two chlorines, so I put a two in front of here. There was only one HG2, so one of these. So one plus two again is three ions. Okay, so far so good. Let's just do the other ones, right? We have lead. And iodine, if I crisscross these up, or not crisscross them, but we have lead and we have iodine. Iodine, just like all the other halogens for ionic compounds, would be the negative one charge. And then the two crisscrosses up, telling me that the, um, the lead was a plus two. There was two iodines, so I have two of these. One plus two is a total of three ions. Okay, let's see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. When we crisscross up tin two hydroxide, SNOH2, we get SN and OH. There was one SN and two OHs, so the OH gets a negative one charge. The tin gets a plus two, and because there was two OHs, I know that I have two of these, and one plus two is a total of three ions. Thank goodness these are all the same, because if your compounds that you have dissociate into the same amount of ions, all you have to do is just look at the KSP values, but we have to do this work just to make sure. Now, in the rule that states that, you know, all of the ions are exactly the same, the most soluble is always the one in which you have the highest KSP values. 
So that kind of makes sense. Remember, high K values means at equilibrium, you favor the products. And that's what you'll dissociate the most. You'll have the most products. So in this case, you just have to look at those exponents. That's what's different. So I have a negative 11, negative 18, negative 8, and negative 27. The most soluble is the highest KSP. So just pick the highest number out of the exponents. In this case, negative 8 is the highest out of negative 11, negative 18, and negative 27. So the most soluble would be PBI2. And that is it. Okay. No more for this one. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you all have a great day. I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.